Corwin Anthony is a uh, former NFL football player, uh, also a chaplain for NFL football teams, uh, played for UCLA, played in three bowl games. Uh, he's a man with great uh, physical ability and physicality, with a world-class wife in gymnastics. Uh, he's a remarkable guy, and I'm just delighted he's come our way to Huntley Prime. Thanks for coming our way, Corwin. Corwin, you, uh, uh, I have met your wife, I've interviewed your wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, she is one outstanding woman, and I was uh, really impressed to hear that you were the one that led her to faith. Yes, yes. That doesn't often happen. No, Usually no. it's the other way around. Yeah, it is, sure is. You know, yeah. I just got involved with our sports ministry on campus at UCLA, and I just kind of recommitted my, my, my walk to the Lord, and about two weeks later came the very first test of my faith, and uh, it, was, it was Kim. Wow. And I knew she was a believer, and and uh, I so I for for the first couple of months in our relationship, I kind of compromised. I was afraid of what you know my faith might do in our relationship, so I didn't tell her that I was going to Bible studies and mm -hmm. meeting with our team chaplain. And and after about a couple of months, just God began to really convict me more and more and more. And I just I just shared with her what was going on in my life, and I shared the gospel with her at that time. And and little did I know that that's it, exactly what she was looking for. It's a great story. Let's talk about your story. Uh, I understand you caught uh, Troy Aikman's last pass at yeah. UCLA. Yes, in the Cotton Bowl, 1988. And it was a touchdown. 89. Yeah, it was a touchdown. Sure was. Uh, Troy's got to have the biggest hands I've seen on a quarterback. <laughs> I mean, he's got these big meat hooks. And he's, he's, a, he's a pure passer. Oh, he sure is. They're one of the greatest quarterbacks I've ever caught balls from, yeah. you know. You also caught passes from Brett Favre. Favre, and yeah. Is, is he ever going to quit? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's done. I just heard he filed his papers here oh, is a week or but so we've ago. Heard this, we've heard so this song we've before. We've heard it before, <laughs> yeah. But and, yeah. And, and which NFL teams did you play for? I played with the L.A. Rams and the New York Jets, and I was traded to Green Bay in 92. And in Green yes. Bay, you, you encountered a culture unlike any oh, other NFL oh, culture yeah. in oh, the yeah. U.S. of A, right? Yeah, you know, when my wife and I were in college, we said to each other, when we get married, we'll play anywhere but Green Bay. <laughs> and <laughs> look what happened. End up in Green Bay. Tell yeah. me, uh, there's more concussions mm -hmm. and more serious injuries than I've ever seen. And I've been an NFL football fan all my life. Yeah. What's up with this? Is it the equipment? Is it the size of the guys? Is it their fitness? What is it? You know, I, th I think it is the, the size of the guys, the speed of the game. I think it's their, the, the training. They're just bigger, stronger, and faster. And uh, so, you know, the, the equipment is not keeping up I was gonna with say, the equipment. power of, of what's going on in that field now. And also, let, let's talk about this. What about, what about steroids and drugs? Are, are, are guys big because of steroids and drugs? No, 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 I don't think so. I think the training, I think there, there's been enough education out there where you know, very few guys, in my, my opinion, are probably using it, you know, steroids to help themselves. But um, um, I think it's just many of these guys are just growing up bigger, stronger, and faster, and they're weight training earlier, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's really helped them to, to get to where they are now. When you were, uh, now you were team chaplain for the Dolphins for what, 10 years? 10 years. 10 yeah. years, and now you're overseeing chaplains for Athletes in Action. Correct. All across the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada, too? Are you no, not in Canada, not, not just in Canada, the U.S. Just the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, you sit down with these multimillionaire players. Uh, they're just young kids in many cases. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have been prodigies their whole lives, have lived in kind of rarefied uh, atmosphere. Um, what kind of needs are you encountering in these uh, elite athletes? Yeah, well, the need to base your self-worth on who you are and not what you do is one. Also, to find your identity in, in your relationship with God and not in your sport and who others say you are. You know, these, these athletes are, are, in a sense, worshipped. Yeah. And, and worship is only reserved for God. And so when humans are worshipped, it has a tendency to corrupt us if we don't know how to deflect it. And for a lot of athletes and any, anyone in the entertainment industry, it, it feels good to, to be admired and, and, and worshiped, so to speak. And if you don't have the humility and the, and the, uh, the wisdom to deflect that and, and stay 
humble, then it can really um, mess with your mind. And you got so much money, you can pretty much do what you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opportunities, you know, when, when I was a chaplain, you know, I'd hold Bible study and these guys would have the option, okay, should I go on this free cruise or should I stay here and go to this Bible study, you yeah. know? And, and so they, um, the distractions are, are just enormous for these athletes. Why are there so many believers in NFL football, do you think? Well, I think it's a game where uh, the man who you compete, you work hard, it's, it's draining emotionally as well as physically. And I think when you're able to sit in God's word and sit around people who are real and love you for who you are, there is a, there's a strong connection there. And the guys who give that a chance really see that, wow, this is a safe place for me. This is a place I need to be in the midst of all that goes on. You're getting chewed out on the field and practice, you know, and yet you can come inside and be with some guys who will encourage you and affirm you and help you continue to grow. It seems to me that, that chaplain plays a critical role because these guys, when they get out of the NFL, have a pretty poor track record when it comes to sustainability in terms of their income, in terms of their relationships, in terms of their life. Yeah, they sure do. As a matter of fact, 80% of every NFL player, once they're done leaving the game, within two years, 80% of them are either bankrupt, unemployed, or divorced. You know, it's a frightening statistic. So we're it, is. Yeah. it is. It yeah. is. I suppose you, you kind of grow up in this rarefied atmosphere and figure that the money will never end, right? Yeah. And the adulation will never end. Yeah. But it does. Yeah, it sure does. Pretty much immediately, <laughs> once your career is over, so it all goes away. So in the final analysis, what you're telling these young guys in 30 seconds is what? You base your identity in your relationship with God, walk with Him and glorify Him in all that you do. And then when your career is done, he's just going to transition you to into another place, a new season of great impact and great joy. Couldn't have said it better. Corin Anthony, thanks for coming our way.